This video is sponsored by myself. If you're looking for some crispy presets inspired by your favorite film stocks, check out my Lightroom presets, link in the description. How's it going everyone? Uh, in today's video, I wanted to do a little chill sit down where I go through my entire editing workflow on my iPad Pro. A lot of you liked the idea of this video when I brought it up in one of my previous videos. So yeah, I think it could be pretty beneficial to any photographer looking to set up their own workflow on an iPad. Uh, I think these things have become super powerful in the past couple of years, especially with the uh, introduction of iPad OS. It's really made iPads much more like a laptop than a tablet. Yeah, the iPad has become my place for you know, writing, um, project managing, watch YouTube videos, and occasionally edit my photos when I'm on the go. I'm mostly proficient in Lightroom Classic, so I still use it as my main way to edit my photos, but um, there's something to be said about you know being able to edit on a desktop computer and then picking up your iPad, hopping on the couch, and uh, continuing right where you left off in the editing process. I think that is really, really cool. Personally, I want to incorporate my iPad more in my editing workflow, especially when it comes to editing my street photography. When it comes to editing on the iPad, I move at a much slower pace, and I think a lot of that is because of the hands-on style of working on an iPad. You're using your fingers, uh, an Apple Pencil, you know, pinching in and out of your image to check focus or sharpness or whatever. It's just a lot more hands-on and, you know, with that, you move at a much slower pace. You don't have hot keys or anything like that, that like you would on uh, the desktop. So the editing process is definitely a lot slower on the iPad, but I actually find that somewhat beneficial when it comes to editing my own street photography. Speaking of slow pace, let's get right into it. So my approach to importing is pretty simple. Um, most cases I'm importing back at home, but if I'm not and I'm editing, say while I'm on a trip, I will have to import onto an external hard drive. And so I go straight from my camera's SD card onto uh, one of these hard drives I have. This is a Lacey hard drive, um, four terabytes. I find four terabytes is a good size for you know, one year's worth of my personal work. Importing your photos to the right place, this whole process or stage in my workflow is uh, sneaky important because I could easily put my photos in some random place and, you know, not have a consistent way of organizing my files. And that's going to lead to pretty bad file management and uh, just some terrible headaches later down the road. So I always make it a point to have an external hard drive with me all the time so I can back up uh, my photos onto this hard drive. My iPad does have internal storage, but it's so limited in space. So I rarely ever upload my photos onto my internal storage. The only case I would do that is if I just didn't have my hard drive for whatever reason. So once I've got my files from my SD card onto my hard drive here, I'm pretty much ready to get them into Lightroom CC and start picking the photos I want to keep and get rid of. But before we get into Lightroom CC and import the photos, um, I just wanna talk about some of the peripherals that I use uh, with my iPad Pro. So as you all probably know already, the iPad has just one USB-C port, so it makes uh, having a dongle pretty much a necessity, especially if I want to be charging my iPad and you know using an external hard drive and importing from an SD card all simultaneously. I use this hub from Hyperdrive and I really like it because it's, unlike most dongles, it has no cord sticking out, so it actually lays flush against the iPad and it almost makes it look like it's part of it. It has your basic uh, SD, USB-A, uh, micro SD, also has an audio port as well, or audio jack, and it also has a fast charging USB-C port, and when I'm editing on my iPad, I always have it plugged into one of my uh, portable hard drives. In this case, I'm using uh, Anchor Powerhouse 100. One final thing, and it's uh, specific to the iPad's display, uh, you wanna make sure you have 
true color tone and night shift off. These two settings are both found under the brightness control and they essentially affect the way your display looks depending on the environment and the light hitting the iPad. So this is going to you know, constantly be changing the picture or the color of your iPad's display. You don't wanna have that when you're editing photos. So I personally always make sure I have these off. Also in terms of brightness, I always max out the brightness to 100% just to you know, keep that consistency. Okay, let's finally get into Lightroom and import these photos. All right, so we're in Lightroom CC and on the bottom left is my library where we'll add new photos to. So I don't have any new photos to actually edit with you all today. Um, I just haven't been out shooting all that much recently. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be uh, importing those XE4 photos from when I did uh, the Liker, the Liker, <laughs> the Leica adapter video. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It was a pretty fun one. So I'll go over to current year and here I have an album for each month. In Lightroom CC, you have the option of making a folder or an album. To import, I click this little blue photo icon in the bottom here and I choose from files because that's how I'll be able to import photos I just put onto my hard drive. Once these photos are in Lightroom, I'm basically ready to start uh, photo culling. So we got our pics in this album and it's time to cull through the photos and make these selections. Uh, to get into this window for uh, photo culling, you click this little star symbol on the right side. This basically brings you into Lightroom's speed review mode. And I really enjoy this part of uh, Lightroom CC. I think they designed it really well. So I can swipe up or down on the left side or the right side of the image. So if I swipe up or down on the left side, I can make these star ratings. And then if I swipe up or down on the right side, I make these flag ratings. My approach to photo culling is really, really simple. Uh, I don't mess with star ratings or yeah, I, don't, I just don't mess with the star ratings. I just do uh, picks, flag picks for the photos I wanna keep. And then for all the photos I don't wanna keep, I filter them out by uh, going over to the filter and then choosing neutral. So the neutral would essentially be everything I didn't pick. Just keeping the neutral photos uh, visible and then selecting all and deleting them. So I wipe them off of Lightroom CC to save space. And there you go. I'm basically left with just the selections I just made. So it's a very simple uh, rundown of how I photo call my photos. Okay, time to finally edit the photos. So I've picked a couple photos that I'm gonna edit with you all today. So I'm gonna show you how I went from these originals to these final edits. Okay, I cleaned up my space a bit here. I realized that when I'm filming the screen, it doesn't give a good representation of all the edits I'm making. Um, so I'm also gonna do a screen record plus the overhead uh, shot just so you can get a good sense of what the image is looking like and not be different than what you know my color grade is like on top of the video. So we are starting with this first shot, which was taken in New York City. It's a hood of a car, a bit trippy. <laughs> Uh, this was taken with the X100F, so I was obviously attracted by all these lines um, happening in the hood of this car. So I want to uh, get rid of this top section here, so I'm going to crop this first. I always use a 4x5 for my portraits, well not all the time, but most of the time. Just because it's, one, it's, uh, I think it's the portrait orientation for Instagram and I just like the ratio actually. I want this to sort of look like it's a car but also not like it's a car so I want to have like hints of it. So you have the this hint of orange which I really like. I want to make sure that's there. But I really want to focus on this um, this portion of the car because it's where the lines are the most uh, compelling I guess. Uh, one thing about using the Apple Pencil and adjusting crop on Lightroom CC is, it is really sensitive. So sometimes it's a bit annoying. And also when you, there's no way to like confirm your crop other than clicking out of it. it just kind of scares me sometimes. And since this is a Fujifilm RAW file, I can go into the profile menu and under camera matching, 
there's different folders here. If you go to camera matching, I have all the different Fujifilm film simulations that are available on the X100F. So it's really cool how you can still shoot raw and still get the benefit of film simulations within Lightroom. What are we in here? I, I like Astia actually. I like how this gives a good starting point. So this is something I actually do in my workflow is check out if I want to start with one of these as a starting point. Um, Velvet Vivia is looking pretty good too, but I like the less saturated look of Astia. I think the next thing we're gonna do obviously is adjust the exposure. So I will go to light and I'm gonna just boost it slightly just to bring in more of the details. You can go into uh, the tone curve, which I actually like how they set up in Lightroom CC on iPad because it's unlike the Lightroom Classic on the desktop, this tone curve would be in like the bottom right corner of your screen. So you would be half looking at your tone curve and then looking at your image. Uh, this way it's, it's nice how they set it up right over. You can just really slight S curve. So I made three points to do an S curve here. But I'm not really thinking it's um, all that necessary actually. So we're just gonna do that. I also added a bit more exposure. So I think that looks good exposure wise. We'll go into color and I'm really hesitant of doing too much um, to the color because I really like how Astia uh, treats this um, blue and this orange. Just for the sake of showing you, I can go into color mix and then if I wanted to adjust the saturation or of one of these colors, I can click this target thing and then click saturation and then pick a point on the picture or pick a point of which color. So say I want to adjust this blue here and desaturate it. I can click it, I've selected it, and then I can go up and down on my screen and that will adjust the saturation of the blue. Color grading, this is basically your split toning. I wonder if we want to add in a bit of green to the shadows. We'll just add a slight uh, green tint to the shadows. I'll go into effects. Not much I want to add here. I don't want to add any grain, although I do do that to some photos. We'll do that to one of the other photos we'll look at. Uh, I'll skip this. Detail, we can boost the sharpening a bit. You can go to optics and so this is uh, gonna change the image quite a bit. This is uh, enable lens corrections. You probably all know this already. Um, I think I think it works. So we'll keep it on. And I think we're done with this this edit. Actually, I want to edit um, or crop out this corner. I, <laughs> some things I just change, and it's a more of a feel thing something you can't really explain. On to the next one, or actually before I do that, I'm gonna save this as a version. So you can go into this button here and it's uh, your versions and you can create a version. I'll call this uh, Astia. It's gonna auto correct to Asia. So now I have a version here and I can go back and you know, switch between different versions. So if I want to have another black and white edit, uh, say I could go to original, apply, I could go to my presets, cookies and cream, and then save this as black and white version. And there you can see, I can switch between the two different versions I just made. Pretty cool. All right, so last photo. Um, this was shot with the X100V. Uh, it's in Boston. And I actually took this in one of my POV videos. You can see this is a smart preview, and that's because I imported this on my desktop computer. 
So um, the iPad is basically using a low res file to um, edit this photo through the cloud. So it saves a lot of space when it comes to cloud storage. So we're gonna actually do a crop here because I want to focus more on this right side of the, the photo. Um, and because this is really what I want to focus on, um, I'm gonna make this a punchy black and white contrasty uh, edit. I think it's gonna really complement all the architecture in this photo and how the light, light is bouncing off one side and you have this shadow side as well. So before I do anything, let's just turn it into a black and white. And there you go. We'll go into light and do tone curve. I'll do the three points that I usually do. So one here, one here. And we'll bring down the blacks a ton because that's really what I wanna do to bring that strong contrast look to this shot. And just like that, it's really done a lot to this photo. Might bring down the highlights a bit too. Uh, sometimes what I like to do is go a little further than what I want, just so I can see how um, I'm impacting the photo. So I'll do that. And you know, I can see that there's some cloud detail here, but I think, I think that's good. That way I can see some of the detail in this building. One thing I you know, wish Lightroom on the iPad could do is uh, have the black um, background be changeable so I can make it white because this part of the photo is like, I don't know where it starts or ends. <laughs> so if I could have that feature, Lightroom, if you're watching this, please do that. All right, we're gonna go to effects and I'm going to zoom in a bit just so I can see what I'm going to do here. I'm gonna boost some grain. Not a lot, just a little sharpness, not really a necessity for this image. And I can go back to crop and see if I wanna straighten it. Sometimes this works pretty well, and in this case, I'll keep it. All right, I think these edits are done. It's time to export them and send them over to Dropbox where I basically store my web and images ready for Instagram and all that. You click the share button, there's a ton of things you can do. It's a bit overwhelming, to be honest. So uh, you can easily do the same thing multiple different ways, which makes it even more confusing. To keep it simple, I just click export to files and then I can basically choose Dropbox and save directly to a folder that I have for Instagram posts. If you click the little settings button on the right, uh, it brings up the export settings and I'm, I'm basically using JPEG, largest available dimension. And then for Instagram, I find 80% works pretty well. And a cool little trick um, to do when you're uploading to Instagram is boosting the sharpness. Uh, I like to add in around 20%. So there you go guys, that's pretty much a uh, overview of my workflow on the iPad. I do use some of my presets as starting points to my editing. So I'm not always starting from scratch, um, but you know, working on this thing, it's super fun. It's very hands-on, like I said, it's very engaging. You feel like you're really part of the editing process. You're not detached um, in some instances, like when you're looking in the bottom right corner of your tone curve and then looking at your image, the tone curve is just slap onto the image and you can see how each effect, or each setting you change impacts the overall look of your photo. And you know, you move at a much slower pace because of that hands-on analog-like um, workflow. You know, just because I can edit so much faster on Lightroom Classic on my desktop with, you know, hotkeys and whatnot, doesn't mean I'm editing better or really, you know, thinking and being thoughtful of my editing process. So much like, you know, pe how people shoot film because of how it slows them down, I think working on an iPad and how it slows my editing process down is very similar in a way. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any specific questions about, you know, my workflow, I'm sure there's some things that I didn't go into 
great detail on. Um, so if you do have any questions or are a little bit confused on certain aspects of the workflow, let me know in the comments. I'll see you all in the next one. Love you all. Peace.